Hey, I see holes like this happen all the time from towel bars. You know, you got your towel bar hung up in the bathroom, your kids come in, they need a grab handle, boom. You got a hole that looks a lot like that. Well, it's not really that hard to fix. I'm gonna show you a really simple way that pretty much anybody can do and it doesn't take long right after this. Okay, when you get a hole like this, this is often caused from like an anchor bolt in there and it gets yanked out of the wall and it kind of pulls out a plug. And sometimes there's a little bit of a, a hole back here. I had some tape back here so you could see it better. It's a little bit of a hole from where it pulled out. And you might wonder, do I need to cut that out? Um, do I need to mesh tape it? How do I fix that? I'm gonna show you a real simple way I just did one the other day. I've done probably a thousand like this because this is really common and this will actually put it back to be pretty dang strong. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with, make sure you clean up anything that's loose and dangling here. You don't want any loose paper, chunks of drywall. It should be kind of swept out like this. If you find any really loose stuff, go ahead and pull it out then you got a nice clean surface. Now, start by scraping, make sure there's no like ridges or anything sticking out. And then what I'm going to use is five minute hot mud. So we're gonna use this stuff right here because hot mud, what it is is a fast setting joint compound. Now I'm gonna use five minute. If you guys are novices, I'd recommend stick with 20 minute, five minute, often can set up in your pan before you even get it on here. I've done this enough that I can actually mix up a whole pan of this and spread it out before it sets up, but that's because I've done this for 35 years. So 20 minute, or if you're not in a big rush, go with 45. And hot mud's a good choice because anytime you put mud on thick, you don't want to use regular joint compound. It'll take forever to dry. It's really weak and it'll shrink terribly and it just doesn't work well. But hot mud, you can put that in pretty much as thick as you want and it will harden. Once it hardens, it will quit shrinking and it just dries so much better. Now here's some samples I made up. What these are is I, I put these in kind of my homemade casting block and I made it about, it's close to a half inch thick and this is hot mud. And you notice that this is just one coat. I didn't smooth it out or anything. It didn't shrink much. It dries smooth. It's tough. You know, for thicker stuff, it's the only way to go because let's compare that to all purpose. This is the raw all purpose. And you can see it's got a big crack here. I actually had to glue it back together with some more mud because it falls apart so easy. And if I were to tap on it, it'd fall apart again. I can pretty much guarantee it's just so much softer, not good for deep stuff. It's only good for thinner stuff. Okay, I'll mix up some five minute hot mud. It doesn't take much at all. You can see I put just barely any water in for something that size and that should be too much, but it makes it easier to mix up. And you can just stir it like this now, if you're gonna do much more like a 45 minute pan full, I have a video out that shows how you can use an egg beater and it works really well. Okay, that came out perfect on the first um, try for the amount of water. Sometime it'll take a few, but that's the other thing about hot mud. You gotta mix it up fast so you don't wanna be sitting here adding water, adding powder and back and forth. You could end up cutting yourself too short on time. So all you really gotta do is fill that sucker in and then just smooth it out. Now I got a little lip of paper trying to make a ridge so I'm just gonna push it down. 
try and get it to sit below the surface and re-scrape it. So all we're trying to do right here is just get a little feel in it. Now you watch in a few minutes, it's gonna be ready to go. Almost no shrinkage. And I'm gonna show you how tough it is. You're gonna be amazed. Okay, and a little tip is wash up your tools immediately as soon as you're done. Don't set them down. Don't think, you know, I'll do something and get to it in a minute. I've been bitten that way many times. I've honestly probably mixed up over, I'd guess, 5,000 bags of hot mud because I've done nothing but drywall repairs for 17 years and before that about 20 years of new construction. Um, anyway, I can tell you that many times I've gotten bit by it. One time I mixed up about this much in a bucket and the boss showed up, got talking to me and before I knew it, I had a whole bucket of it setting up and I threw the bucket away. <laughs> it's just easier. So now let me show you this. What this is, is something I was playing with a while back. I made two holes in this. You can see these holes go through the sheetrock right here. And this one is actually that size, that brown paper right there. That's not this sheetrock. It's from me putting another piece of sheetrock behind it so that when I filled it, it had something to hold the shape. And then when I pulled it away, it took the paper off of the drywall. So that's actually just raw drywall mud all through there and all through there with nothing else, just raw drywall mud. Same with that one, but this one impresses me because it's so huge, but I made sure it fit into everything really well, and it becomes like, I mean, it hurts to try and, I've yet to hurt this thing at all. It hurts to try and knock that out of there. So it is solid. I honestly believe that you can fix a hole like this and then just mud over it and it'll be fine. I don't think it's going to crack right there. Now I still do it with mesh tape just to make sure, but I was playing with this to see. So for something like this, that small, this type of repair is gonna work great. And I'll put one more little coat of mud on it and I'll show you that and then this thing is done. All right, it's been maybe five minutes. Now what the time on the hot mud means is if you got five minute hot mud, that's five minutes of working time, 20 minute, that's 20 minutes of working time. So that's basically once you get it mixed up, you've got 20 minutes. That's it. If you mix it up quickly, if you take longer, deduct a little bit. I often will set a timer on my phone. If I'm using 20 minute, I'll set one for 15. Then I know that I've got just a few more minutes until it may start setting up. Now this one, it's not rock solid, but it's it's firm enough that we can go over it. I'm trying to do several videos here because we're just about to move out of our house if you've seen that video. So I'm going to go ahead and coat it and I guarantee you it's not gonna shrink up anymore. That's the nature of hot mud as you saw with that sample. And actually I noticed I got another one of these mocked up here. I was gonna put mesh tape over this. It looks like I didn't, but this is all purpose that was allowed to just dry. And you can see it dries terrible. The hot mud dries, dries totally smooth and ready to go. So now we wanna coat this. Now, the general rule of thumb when coating something is use a knife that's wider than the repair. Although if you get a hole that's say 12 inches wide, you don't really have to have a 16 inch blade but you don't want to have a repair that's say eight inches and use one of these to coat it. I'm gonna explain that in a separate video, so be watching for that. So we can coat this little one with a six. Just put some mud on, and then what we wanna do is go around the outside edge and feather it by tilting our blade, so we do like so. So we get it like that and then lay your knife down pretty good. You don't want to stand it up too much because the more you stand it up, the more you take off. So if I stand my knife up just a little too much, I just take all that off. If I put it, <laughs> hard to work the two of them together. If I put it like that and I lay my knife down, you can see it leaves most of it on there. Stand it up a little bit, wipes it off. So. 
you want your knife tilted over pretty far so that you're just smoothing this out after you feathered it. You don't want to leave a hump there, but you want to put just enough mud on where it covers everything. And I see I actually pulled a little bit out, so there, and that that is just enough mud where it's covered the whole repair and it leaves a little bit for sanding because with this one this mud will shrink a little bit we might want to sand it one time before it's ready to go but after that all you need to do is take a sanding sponge go around the outside edge sand the outside feather your feathering outside edge with the sanding sponge that way your texture will blend in better Hey, if you want to show your support for our channel and gain exclusive benefits only for members, be sure to join by clicking that join button down below. Once this is fairly dry, it's ready for texture. If you're going to do a smooth finish, leave it smooth, let it dry completely, sand it with like 220 and it's ready to go. Hey, I hope that helped you out. If you like these kind of videos, be sure and subscribe to our channel and click that bell icon. That's what will get you notified each time we put out a video. And if we're helping you save any money, we have ways that you can uh, support our channel down in the description down below. Just click that down arrow or the show more and you'll see different ways you can join our Patreon page and our YouTube membership. And you can make one time donations to say thanks. Hey, I enjoyed helping you guys out with this. So I will see you guys on the next video. Take care, everybody.